Welcome to Long Covid Doctor, an educational series for sufferers of Long Covid. I'm Dr Tim Robinson, formerly a family doctor, a GP for 30 years, now GP lead for three NHS Long Covid clinics and a GP clinical lead in Long Covid across the southwest of England. This episode is on tinnitus and Long Covid. In part one, I talk about the symptoms, investigations and causes. And in part two, I will talk about the management and outcomes. So check out the references and resources and links to social media in the show notes below. And just to say, any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mention should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor or medically qualified health professional. And so here we go, tinnitus and long COVID. So firstly, the context, the background. Tinnitus in long COVID is quite common. Certainly in my experience in the three long COVID clinics I work in, it can have a um, significant effect on um, our patients' well-being. And so what are the patients actually experiencing? What are the symptoms and associated symptoms? Tinnitus is the perception of sounds in the ears or head that don't come from an outside source. So tinnitus is variously described by patients as a noise, um, a ringing, a humming, a hissing, a whistling, a buzzing. Any of those, those descriptions uh, are quite frequently, quite frequently mentioned. The noise is usually continuous, but it may be intermittent, coming and going. Tinnitus may vary in volume, uh, often related to the amount of activity that the patient might be doing or surrounding ambient sound. Tinnitus is typically worse at night because there's no other ambient sound. It may be heard in one ear or both ears ranging from sort of soft, low volume or extremely loud. Tinnitus may be associated with difficulty in concentrating and listening. Some, some people find it really distressing and resulting in significant impact on mental well-being um, and sort of an effect on sort of their general, general sort of um, everyday life and family life, work life, social life. Associated symptoms with tinnitus can be hearing loss, so deafness, varying degrees, either one-sided or bilateral, both sides. Um, it can be associated with balance problems, usually sort of head spinning, dizziness or vertigo, those sort of balance problems. Some patients also experience a sensitivity to sounds, particularly loud sounds, and this is known as hyperacusis. So what are the worsening factors for tinnitus? It's really important to know that a major contributor for tinnitus is stress and anxiety. So stress and anxiety are certainly worsening factors. And this, of course, is present in many of our patients with long COVID due to the effect, the impact that long COVID has had on their lifestyle and well-being. Tinnitus is often worse with tiredness, with sleep disturbance. Again, this is obviously, as we know, a common symptom and problem within long COVID. And it's often worse with exposure to loud noise, but the most common worsening factor for tinnitus really is the frustration and annoyance that having tinnitus brings with it. It is sort of unrelenting and it's always there. It gets our patients really worked up and all these factors exaggerate and magnify the tinnitus. However, before I go on, I think it's it's worthwhile you know, and important to share a few facts about tinnitus for reassurance. 
Tinnitus is extremely common, affecting 10% of the population. That's just the general population, not just the long COVID patients. So 10% of the general population have tinnitus. It's really, rarely, rarely a sign of serious underlying conditions, which is obviously good news. Tinnitus is, is made up by the hearing system in the brain, the wiring, as it were, not the ears themselves. Most pe people report that tinnitus lessens or even disappears with time. Again, clearly good news. The brain sort of, in a weird way, learns how to block it out. And again, also important to take on board that there are a number of strategies that can reduce the severity and impact of tinnitus. So don't give up. And so what are the causes for tinnitus? As I said, it's important to know all these causes because it helps us understand the problem and hence accept the problem. And there are many causes for tinnitus, but most are incredibly rare, such as something called otosclerosis, Meniere's disease, multiple sclerosis, acoustic neuroma, narrowing of the carotid artery, um, problems with the jaw, the jaw joint, the temporomandibular joint, all these can present with tinnitus along with their own other symptoms. Um, plus, it's actually very well recognized that, that viral illnesses can cause tinnitus. So usually along with balance problems and hearing problems due to damage of the the nerves that serve the hearing um, uh, inner ear organs, so the hearing nerves, if you like. And this has been seen in sort of measles, in rubella, German measles, um, even after flu, uh, herpes viruses such as Epstein-Barr virus, the glandular fever virus, varicella zoster, the shingles virus, chickenpox shingles virus, CMV. All these viruses have, there are cases of patients with, with tinnitus, as well as, as I say, balance and hearing problems as a result of having had an acute viral illness. So obviously SARS-CoV-2, the COVID virus, you know, so therefore, again, it's a coronavirus, an upper respiratory tract virus. So then, you know, it's not surprising for those other viruses can cause these problems with the balance and hearing and, and tinnitus organs, then SARS-CoV-2 probably can as well. However, as I've said, all those causes that I've listed are pretty rare. The majority of causes of tinnitus are due to age-related changes in the inner ear, the auditory apparatus in which there is usually impaired hearing loss hearing also. 75% of people with hearing loss also have tinnitus so it is common. Um, and also interestingly enough only 20 to 30% of people with tinnitus have normal hearing so only 20 to 30% um, with tinnitus have normal hearing. So it really is very common as you get older and the age-related loss of hearing um, that is incredibly common and the commonest cause with tinnitus um, is probably the, the reason, the background underlying reason. But on top of that, if it's happened since COVID, it's probably because of the viral effects on top of that, you know, that tendency. And the theory behind it all is that that um, tinnitus, um, there's a sort of in tinnitus, there's a sort of a hyper awareness of the normal, random electrical signals in our hearing nerves, and the auditory pathways to the brain. We all have these random electrical activity impulses, 
And most of the time, as I said before, the brain blocks it out. And so you don't hear it. However, in some circumstances, the brain does, you know, pick them up, doesn't block them out, and it, the brain sort of misinterprets them as this, this misinterprets these sounds, this, this electrical activity as a sound or tinnitus. However, the, the commonest trigger for this, and again, I refer to worsening factors, what makes tinnitus worse. The commonest trigger for this is stress and emotional shock through its direct effect on the autonomic nervous system within the brain. And this leads to amplification and reinforcement of the tinnitus in those parts of the brain that deal with emotions. This in turn makes the tinnitus louder and more noticeable and sets up, a, if you like, a vicious circle which is extremely difficult to break. Turning now to tinnitus uh, within COVID, i.e. long COVID, um, there are a number of reasons why someone who's had a COVID infection, that's been left with long COVID, um, can develop tinnitus, which then persists. There are multiple pathways that the virus can get into the hearing apparatus in the inner ear, via the middle ear, where the, the, the three bones of the middle ear are. Um, the virus can get in through the brain lymphatic system, the lymph system, or theoretically the, the virus can get in through the labyrinthine artery, the artery that then sort of supplies the whole inner ear uh, apparatus. And ACE2 receptors the angiotensin converting enzyme two receptors uh, have been found in the inner ears and as we know SARS-CoV-2 virus basically links in uh, links up with the the ACE2 receptors their spike protein locks into the ACE2 receptors and causes all the subsequent COVID damage and as I say those ACE2 the receptors have been found in the the inner ear. So, further research studies have found that SARS-CoV-2 damaged um, cells the the in the in the nerves themselves. So the nerves uh, have have been identified to have found SARS-2 SARS-CoV-2 sorry. Uh, virus affecting those nerves. Um, the, they've also found the virus affecting the cochlear hair cells, hence leading to deafness. Um, they found the, the COVID virus in the vestibular hair cells, hence leading to balance problems. Plus, just to add insult to injury, plus there are studies have shown that there are immune-mediated inflammation including autoimmune damage um, affecting the nerve pathways from the inner ear to the auditory areas the hearing areas in the brain there's also of course a possibility of blood clot um, the microthrombi formation in the sort of the circulation the microvascular circulation that serves those same auditory areas in the brain and again, you know, add insult to injury, tinnitus is often reported in patients with long COVID dysautonomia and mast cell activation, probably caused by all those same mechanisms. So, long story short, you know, basically infection with the SARS-CoV-2 COVID virus can, you know, bring about sort of all those sort of processes which, you know, then is resulting in the tinnitus damage through, because of the damage in the audit, auditory apparatus in the inner ear or the actual nerve pathways or in the hearing centres in the brain. All those processes can cause damage 
anywhere, anywhere along that sort of pathway. And as I say, resulting in tinnitus. And so, what's the next step? What we need to do is make a thorough medical assessment. And that means basically a standard history examination. We want to find out all about what the patient is experiencing, not only the presenting symptom of the, the tinnitus, but associated symptoms, things that make those that's tinnitus better, things that actually relieve it and things that are worse in it. And obviously examination, examine the examine the um, the outer ear, look at the eardrum, do the sort of the tuning fork tests to examine the 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 function of the of the 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 pathways that I've been talking about. And also of course to exclude those rare causes listed above earlier um, that can lead to tinnitus. And then there are various investigations that may, you may want to do other than the usual long COVID blood tests investigations that might be helpful. So you know, blood tests looking for anemia. So anemia, one of the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia can be tinnitus. Obviously, with um, the fact that tinnitus is so often associated with hearing loss, then obviously a hearing test might be helpful to look for age-related hearing impairment, which, as I said, is probably the commonest cause for tinnitus. You can whilst we're doing thinking audiology, tympanometry to measure the pressure inside the ears, maybe that reveal blocked or abnormal eustachian tube function or even glue ear. Hospital specialists, ENT surgeons, ear, nose and throat surgeons may request a brain scan, a, um, a MRI scan to look for acoustic neuroma in those patients with one-sided hearing loss and tinnitus. They may also request an ultrasound of the neck blood vessels to look for any narrowed carotid artery um, in those patients with sort of pulsatile tinnitus, i.e. tinnitus that is, you know, following the pulse. So not only do we need to take a full standard history and examination to get the diagnosis, but we also need it to just to, to look for red flags, i.e. symptoms and signs that suggest something more sinister. Um, despite the fact that tinnitus is a symptom only rarely associated with serious underlying conditions, we should also we should always be on the lookout for red flags that might suggest a more serious condition. So red flags, you know, those warning signs would be you know, any associated neurological um, symptoms or signs, such as facial weakness or suspected stroke, um, persistent one-sided tinnitus with or without associated um, uh, one-sided hearing loss. Potentially, that could be due to an acoustic neuroma. Persistent pulsatile tinnitus. Like I said, that could be due to narrowing of the carotid artery. Sudden onset, complete hearing loss. Again, that's a little bit worrying. Um, sounds a bit vascular to me. Um, uncontrolled vertigo. So again, it's all tied in. Vertigo, hearing loss, tinnitus, it's all tied in. And if it's uncontrolled vertigo, that obviously needs sort of looking into. And and also, you know, not related directly to all the, the hearing side of things, any sort of serious effects on mental health with depressive features really should is a red flag. It, it shouldn't be, uh, it should be taken seriously. You know, because, you know, tinnitus, if it's really severe, very significant, has a massive effect on on the well-being of a patient and so theoretically could lead to mental health, mood disturbance, mental health problems, etc. So there we are, the, the, the sort of symptoms themselves, the investigations if, if 
needed, um, the causes. Um, I, I think that covers all, all of that, all those aspects of tinnitus. And really it sort of concludes the first part of my talk on tinnitus and non-COVID. But what's more important is, what are we going to do about it? What's the outlook? I'll come on to that in part two. And so in the meantime, check out any references or resources and links and social media in the show notes below. And as I said before, any advice, diagnoses, treatments that I mentioned should only be considered after discussion with your own doctor or medically qualified professional. So in the meantime, I wish you well. I wish you well with your long COVID recovery and hopefully we'll meet in the second part. Cheerio.